Good morning, good morning, Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so I will know that you are watching and also type a number one in the comments if you are tuning in for the very first time. Happy Monday. Great morning, Marion. Great morning, everyone. Hello, Debbie. Good morning, everyone. As you all are tuning morning, in, please go ahead and begin to share out the broadcast. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Happy Monday. Go ahead and say God did it again. It is a great day to be alive. A great day to be alive. I am so thankful and so grateful. Go ahead and say God did it again. Happy Monday, Sabina. Happy morning. Uh, happy Monday, Caroline. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to see you all. Hello, Tamiko. As you all are jumping on, go ahead and share the broadcast. Hi, Sabina. And go ahead and um, begin to share the broadcast um, on your personal pages and in, and in your community groups. And if someone can share this in the We Write the Word community for me, that will be amazing. After you have shared, you know what to do. Go ahead and type in share. Let me get my iPad pulled up so I can share as well. Good morning, Doretha. Good morning. Great morning, everybody. I am so excited. Go ahead and say God did it again. Great morning, Robin Weaver. If you all have not already, you know what to do. Grab your anointing oil and go ahead and say my hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. Amen. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus' name. Great morning, Karen. Good morning. Good morning, Karen Lewis. So good to see you. Ooh, happy Monday. Happy Monday. All right. I feel like I'm just way too excited for Monday morning. <laughs> way too excited good morning jennifer you and karen are usually the first two on this morning i was looking for you good morning i don't think i saw joan pop on great morning everybody good morning all right i need to just bring it down a few notches right it's way too early for this on a monday morning <laughs> Good morning. That's right. After you all have shared, go ahead and type in hashtag shared for me. We are all called to evangelize. We are all called to spread the word of God. And as you all share this video, as you all share these videos, that is what you all are doing, evangelizing and spreading the word of God. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, BFF. We have a big day coming up on Friday and I'm excited about it. All right. So um, you all know what to do. Go ahead and type in my hands are blessed. Make sure that you all have anointed your hands. Grab your anointing oil. My anointing oil is always back in my closet. But you see these oily hands have been anointed. And just remember as you go throughout your day, speak that over yourself. Or speak it. Just speak it out loud. My hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything that I touch prospers. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover. And listen, I believe that with everything in me. I think I've spoken it long enough that even when I first began speaking it, I didn't believe it, but now I believe it. Amen. <laughs> All right, so let's just take a moment. If you are on this broadcast live, or even if you are catching the replay, that means that you were on the wake up list and that's not a small thing. So we'll just take a moment and just thank the Father on today before uh, we jump in and get started. So I want you all to type in the comments what it is that you are thankful for. Just type in one thing in the comments um, and then we will jump in. And then we will jump in. Let me make sure I have all of these um, notifications off because like all kind of stuff goes on over here. <clears throat> all right, so Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we bless you. We thank you for being God. We thank you for being good in every way there is to be good. And we just wanna say thank you on today. We thank you for being our Father. We thank you for being our provider. We thank you for being our healer. We thank you for being our deliverer. God, we thank you for everything. We thank you for, that's right. Uh, Jennifer says, God, I truly appreciate you. We thank you, Father, for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea that you have protected us from. And Father, we also thank you for a sound mind on today. We thank you for a sound mind. We thank you for waking us up. 
with a mind to want to spend time with you. We thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time in your word. We are just so thankful and so grateful for all that you've done. Even if you need to do another thing for us, we still just want to say thank you. Y'all type that in this morning. Say thank you. Good morning, Audrey. Good morning. All right, so we are going to um, jump in. I feel like I need to move this warm lemon water. We're going to jump in. And our opening verse for today is Mark 30. If someone can type that in for me. Our opening verse for today is Mark 4.30. Sorry about that. Mark chapter 4, verse 30. If someone can type that in. Mark chapter 4, verse 30. All right. And it reads, Jesus said, what is God's kingdom like? What story can I use to explain it? So it's actually Mark 4, chapter 30 through 32. Mark chapter 4, verses 30 through 32. If someone can type that in. What story can I use to explain it? It is like what happens when a mustard seed is planted in the ground. It is the smallest seed in all the world. But once it is planted, it grows larger than any garden plant. It even puts out branches that are um, that are big enough for birds to nest in its shade. And so I'll read that again. But our opening verse is Mark um, chapter four, verses 30 through 32. Mark chapter four, verses 30 through 32. And I am going to read our prophetic word for today. Let me just say good morning to all of you that just jumped on. As I was reading the opening verse, I saw a few of you jump on. Good morning. Please go ahead and share the broadcast after you have shared. Please go ahead and type in hashtag shared so we will know that you all have shared um, the gospel. All right. So our opening verse your labor of love is not in vain in me, says the Lord. Your labor of love is not, I'm sorry, let me, I'm hearing all kind of stuff over here still. Your labor of vain is not, your labor of love is not in vain in me, says the Lord. Your harvest is coming. And I feel like I just need to pause right there for a moment. And I need you all to say that out loud. My harvest is is coming my harvest is coming I feel like some of you have um, become to grow weary you know and so I just want to remind you all today as the word says do not become weary in your well-doing do not become weary in your well-doing I want to remind you on this morning your harvest is coming I don't know about you but that has me a little excited you know that reminder has me excited on this morning I need you to say my harvest is coming my harvest is coming for though you have sown in tears and work through the heat of the day, you will see the plentiful harvest and laugh and shout for joy as you reap accordingly. Not only is your harvest coming, but you will reap accordingly. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning to all of you. Just go ahead and let me just pause because I see you all typing that in. Let me just let you all pause. Go ahead and say that my harvest is coming. Someone type that in for me as well. My harvest is coming. Your harvest is coming. Your harvest is coming. I'll give you all a moment to type that in the comments. My harvest is coming. My harvest is coming. For though you have sown in tears and worked through the heat of the day, you will see the plentiful harvest and laugh and shout for joy as you reap accordingly. A festival of the plenteous harvest awaits you as you enter into this new season of rejoicing. Do not anticipate a failed harvest, for I cannot be mocked. I said that you will reap what you sow and you will enjoy all the fruit of your labors as I reward you exceedingly, says the Lord. As I reward you exceedingly, says the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged on today. Great is my faithfulness to you, says the Lord. As you have been faithful to me, I will give you the desires of your heart and pour out my blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon you, and you will become a wellspring of blessing. You will pour out into the lives of others as I pour into you. And listen, that is what this is all about. As God pours into us, we can uh, begin to pour into others. As God blesses us, we can bless others. So he's saying today, you will pour out into the lives of others as I pour into you. And, and your desert places of your life will blossom like a rose. And the drought 
will be over. I need you all to type in the comments today. The drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. Whatever that drought looks like for you, the drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. You will have more than enough. And as you give freely, and as you give freely, and as you give freely, you will have abundant joy. And I will continue to pour into you so that you are fat and full of my blessings and fully satisfied. I don't know about you, but the only thing I want to be fat and full of is God's blessings. The only thing I want to be fat and full of is God's blessings. That's right. That's right, Debbie. The drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. Before I move on, I'm going to give you all a moment to type that in. The drought is over. The drought is over. Go ahead and say the drought is over. The drought is over. The only thing we need to be fat and full of are the blessings of God. The blessings of God. The drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. That's right. That is what we are called to do. Pour out. Exactly. Exactly. Pour out. Exactly. Exactly. And that is definitely what I've learned, Jennifer. All right. I feel like I need to read this word again. <laughs> You know what? And I don't think I ever read it twice, but we're going to go ahead and do that on this morning. All right. We're, we're just going to read it again because I may I need to make sure that we really get this. I need to make sure that we really get this. And before I do, let me read. Um, no, I'm going to read it again. All right. Your labor of love is not in vain, says the Lord. Your harvest is coming. For though you have sown in tears and worked through the heat of the day, you will see the plentiful harvest and laugh and shout for joy as you reap accordingly. A festival of the plenteous harvest awaits you as you enter in to this new season of rejoicing. Do not anticipate a failed harvest, for I cannot be mocked. I said that you will reap what you sow and you will enjoy all the fruit of your labors as I reward you exceedingly. Great is my faithfulness to you, says the Lord, and you have been faithful to me. I will give you the desires of your heart. I will give you the desires of your heart and pour out my blessings upon blessings upon blessings, and you will become a well spring of blessing. You will pour out into others' lives as I pour into you, and, there, and your desert places of your life will blossom like a rose, and the drought will be over. You will have more than enough as you give freely, and will have abundant joy, and I will continue to pour into you um, so that you are fat and full of my blessings and fully satisfied so that you are fat and full of my blessings and fully satisfied. I need you all to say today, I am fat and full of the Lord's blessings and I am fully satisfied. Good morning, Claire. I didn't see your name pop up, but I see your 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 uh, profile picture in the hearts. Good morning. I don't know about you, but I want to be fat and full on the Lord's blessings. So that was our prophetic word for today. I was super excited to share it. I don't think I've ever read them twice, but I felt led to do that today for sure. So let's talk about that for a moment. Your harvest is coming. Your harvest, yes, blossoms like a rose. Your harvest is coming. So our opening verses for today were Mark 4, verses 30 through 32. Jesus said, what is God's kingdom like? What story can I use to explain it? It is like what happens when a mustard seed is planted in the ground. It is the smallest seed in all the world. Somebody say, but once. It is the smallest seed in all the world, but once it is planted, it grows larger than any garden plant. It even puts out branches that are big enough for birds to nest in its shade, for birds to nest in its shade. So I want to leave you all with a few more scripture references to read. I won't read them, but um, I want to leave you with them also. If someone can type these in the comments for me as I share them. And after the video, if you will grab your Bibles and look up these verses, all right? Um, Galatians 6, 7. Someone type that in the comments for me. Galatians 6, 7. Galatians 6, 7, Galatians 6, 7, and I'll give you all a moment um, 
to type that in, Galatians 6, 7. All right, and we all know that. A person will reap what he sows. You will harvest what you plant. Galatians 6, 7. A person will reap what he sows. You will harvest what you plant. So I think I remembered us um, touching on this topic before. And if I'm not mistaken, my question um, may have been, uh, what kind of seeds are you planting? What kind of seeds are you planting? So if Galatians 6, 7 is telling us a person will reap what he sows, you will harvest what you plant. So what kind of seeds have you sown? Your question needs to be, what have I planted? What kind of seeds has you, have you sown? The next scripture reference I want to leave you all with is Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. Uh, the next I want to leave you with is Hebrews eleven six. Hebrews eleven six. Hebrews eleven six. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And diligence means persistent effort. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Persistent meaning, um, diligence meaning persistent effort. And listen, hashtag ask me how I know. I need to read that one again. Hebrews eleven six. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Another scripture reference, Proverbs 3, 6. Proverbs 3, 6. Proverbs 3, 6. I'll just read it. In everything you do, put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. What a beautiful promise. Let me read that again. Proverbs 3, 6 in the Living Bible Translation. In everything you do, put God first. In everything you do, put God first. And he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. So what does that tell us? If we want to be successful in anything that we do, it doesn't matter what it is. If we want to be successful in anything that we do, we must put God first. And as he do that, he will direct us and crown our efforts with success. The next scripture reference I want to leave you all with before I jump in. John 12, 24. John 12, 24. And I'll go ahead and read it. Timeless truth, I speak to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls and dies in the ground, it remains alone. But if it dies, it yields much fruit. So that was John 12, 24. And it looks like you all have them all. So the reason I'm giving this to you is because I want you all to meditate on these. So I gave you all uh, Mark 30 through 32, Galatians 6, 7, Matthew 6, 33, Hebrews 11, 6. Looks like you all have that. Thank you. Proverbs 3, 6. And the last one, thank you, John 12, 24. So um, as you all pull them up in your Bibles, you know, grab your Bibles, grab your highlighters, um, highlight them, grab an index card, write a few of them down on index cards and meditate on them and meditate on them. All right. And so you all make sure someone remind me that after um, the end of the broadcast, when we are sharing our takeaways, I want you all, I want to take a moment to just talk about how the no complaining fast went. All right. I want to just talk about that for a moment, how the no complaining fast went. And we'll do that at the end of the broadcast. All right. So there are seven laws to sowing and reaping. Somebody type in the number seven. There are seven laws to sowing and reaping. There are seven laws to sowing and reaping. I'm just going to give you all the seven laws and give you, um, yes, I'm going to give you all the seven laws and we'll talk about them briefly if we need to. So the seven laws to sowing and reaping. There are seven laws to sowing and reaping. The first one, we reap in kind to what we sow. We reap in kind to what we sow. And so that was my, that was why I asked that question. And I kind of ask myself this often, you know, if there are things that are happening in our lives and we don't like it, we need to think, okay, uh, you, how did I get here? You know, how did I get here? What kind of seeds am I sowing? What kind of seeds am I sowing? So we must always keep that in mind. We will reap what it is that we sow. So we need to continually ask us ourselves and continuously be mindful of what oh i'm seeing i failed i need to start again all right let's we'll talk about it we'll talk about it so the seven laws of sowing and reaping the first one is we reap in kind to what we sow so if we sow evil 
we will reap evil. Evil, if we sow good, we will reap good. So what kind of seeds are you planting? All right, and I wanna leave you all with two scripture references. Yes, two more. Um, Job 4, 8 is one. Job 4, 8, those, um, Job 4, 8. And um, I will also leave you with Proverbs eleven eighteen. Proverbs eleven eighteen. Proverbs eleven eighteen. So we reap in kind to what we sow. The second law to sowing and reaping: we reap later than we sow. We reap later than we sow. And so, as you know, we're being mindful of what kind of seeds it is that we're sowing. It's easy to not really pay attention to it because. We don't we, we don't reap what it is that we sow right away. You know, we end up reaping later what it is that we sow. So we're just going along and we're sowing these seeds, sowing these seeds, sowing these seeds, and we don't see anything happening. This is whether good or bad. And we need to be mindful that um, the second law is we reap later than we sow. Somebody type in hashtag later. We reap later than we sow. All right. There is a time and season for everything. And if the word tells us we will reap what we sow, we will reap what we sow. All right. Number three, the third law to sowing and reaping is we reap more than we sow. We reap more than we sow. We reap more than we sow. So I need you all to ask yourselves again, what kind of seeds we have to be mindful. We have to be mindful. I wish there was something that we can, let me we reap more than we sow. So a scripture reference for that is Hosea 8, 7. Hosea 8, 7. Hosea 8, 7. Hang on. Okay, Hosea 8, 7. Hang on one second. Hosea 8, 7. All right. Hosea 8, 7. Another scripture reference is Matthew 13, 8. Matthew 13, 8. Matthew 13, 8. So those were the two scripture references for number three. We reap more than we sow. We reap more than we sow. Um, that's the fourth law to sowing and reaping. Um, we reap in proportion to what we sow. We reap in proportion. Hold the line. We reap in proportion to what we sow. Sorry about that. Excuse me. A scripture reference for that is 2 Corinthians 9, 6. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Okay, it looks like y'all are caught up with the verses. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. There are seven laws to sowing and reaping. Number one, we reap in kind what we sow. Number two, we reap later than we sow. Um, our time and season will come, whether we're um, whatever it is that we're reaping, whatever it is that we're sowing, good or bad. We reap more than we sow. And the fourth is we reap in proportion to what we sow. So 2 Corinthians 9, 6, somebody say, the Bible says, somebody say, the Bible says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. Um, and another scripture reference is Luke 6, 31 through verses 38. 631 through verses 38 and I want to go ahead and slow down for a minute and read that and read these verses all right so someone type in Luke 631 through 38 all right somebody say the Bible says and I'm going to read them do to others as you would like them to do to you do good to them then your reward from heaven will be very great and you will truly be acting as children of the most high for he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked praise the lord i'm so thankful for that you must be compassionate just as your father is compassionate do not judge others and you will not be judged do not condemn others or will all come back against you forgive others and you will be forgiven give and it will be given to you your gift will return to you in full and overflowing an oh an overflowing measure pressed down shaken together to make room for more and running over somebody say i want my gifts to run over <laughs> i want my gifts to run over i want my gifts to run over whatever measure you use to give whether it be large or small you will be um you will be used to measure let me read that again 
because I have it memorized in my mind in one translation. I'm reading this in the Living Bible. Whatever measure you use to give, large or small, will be used to measure what is given back to you. What is given back to you. So we reap what it is that we sow. All right. And so the fifth law to sowing and reaping. Are we on number five? Yes. That's right. I'll give you all a moment to type that in. I want my gifts to run over. I want my gifts to run over to overflowing. I want my gifts to run over. <laughs> Number five, we reap some things we did not sow. We, will, we can also reap some things that we did not sow. All right. So a scripture reference for that is I have a few because I had to find a few. So I'll leave them all with you, but I won't read them all. The first scripture reference, someone type in James 1.17. James 1 17 and you all please go back and look these up this is uh this will keep you busy for today all right James 1 17 every good gift comes down from the father every good gift comes down from the father so we reap some things that we did not sow one generation plants the tree the next enjoys the shade one generation plants the tree the next enjoys the shade so that was James 1 17 every good gift comes down from the father all right and I'll also leave you with Proverbs 13 22 Proverbs 13 22 a good inherit a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children number five we reap some things that we did not sow all right we reap some things that we did not sow another scripture reference is James 3 18 James 3 18 all right, y'all have James 1.17. Um, and then uh, Proverbs 13.22. Okay, thank you, Fawn. And the last one was James 3.18. James 3.18. James 3.18. Someone got that? All right, number six. We reap smaller consequences of sin when we sincerely repent. We reap smaller consequences of sin when we sincerely repent. Did someone get um, James 3.18? Thank you. All right. We reap smaller consequences of sin when we sincerely repent. Somebody say sincerely. When we sincerely repent. When we sincerely repent. Scripture references are Romans 5.20. Listen, we should be in our Bibles all day, right? <laughs> With all these scripture references. Romans 5.20. We reap smaller consequences of sin when we sincerely repent. Romans 5.20. Where sin increased, grace multiplied all the more. Where sin increased, grace multiplied all the more. Where sin increased, grace multiplied all the more. Another scripture reference is... No, we'll just leave it at Romans 5.20. All right, so the last law, number seven, um, to sowing and reaping. Not the last, but the last that we're talking about today. We reap the full harvest of good only if we persevere. We reap the... F I thought I turned off my messenger notifications. My iPad is just not turning them off. All right. We reap the full harvest of... Everybody doesn't know I'm on live. Sorry, y'all. We reap the full harvest of good only if we persevere. We reap the full harvest of good only if we persevere. Galatians 6, 7. A person will reap what he sows, so we must not grow weary in doing good. What did we say at the beginning of this broadcast? Your harvest is coming, so be encouraged. Do not become weary in well-doing, all right? For in due time, we will reap if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us do good to all people. And so that was Galatians 6, verses 7 through 9. Galatians 6, verses 7 through 9. And listen, these verses right here always encourage me. Whenever I feel like, you know, I'm growing weary and I know when I am because I start asking the questions, why God, why, when God, when, you know, we all do. Um, and this always encourages me. And so I pray that um, this scripture, Galatians 6 verses 7 through 9, encourages someone on today. And just remember your harvest is coming again. In due time, we will reap if we do not give up. So there's somebody on here that's feeling like they're just done, they're over it, things are taking too long, they're ready to give up. If that's you, don't give up. 
Don't give up. Your harvest is coming. Your harvest is coming. Your harvest is coming. All right. So we reap the full harvest of good only if we persevere. So I need you all to say today, whether you feel like it or not, whether you believe it or not, I will persevere. I will persevere. I will persevere. I will persevere. I will not give up. I will not quit. I will not grow weary in well-doing. Even if you do grow weary, do not quit. Do not give up. Your harvest is coming. Your harvest is coming. You are walking in to your season of harvest. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. Another scripture reference. 1 Corinthians 2.9. 1 Corinthians 2.9. We reap the full harvest of good. Only if. Somebody say only if. If we want to reap the full harvest of good. It says only if, only if we persevere, only if. All right, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, it is written, Things that no eye has seen or ear heard or mind imagined are the things God has prepared for those who love him. Let me read that again. I just felt that one. I felt that one. Let me read it again. 1 Corinthians 2, 9, it is written, Things that no eye has seen no ear has heard or mine has even imagined are the things God has prepared for those who love him. I'm going to just pause for a moment. I felt that one. Mm-hmm. First Corinthians 2, 9. Things that no eye has seen or ear has heard or mind has even imagined are the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. That's right, Natasha. I will not give up. Be, that's right, Yvonne. Do not give up. Do not give up. That's all I have for today. Do not give up. Do not give up. That's it. That's all that I have today. Be encouraged. This was just a word of encouragement on today. Your harvest is coming. You are walking into your harvest season. Do not grow weary in well-doing. Do not grow weary in well-doing. All right, let me make sure I have everything. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I have today. So, I just have um, two declarations for today. I decree and declare... I will sow and reap a harvest of blessings. If someone can type that in for me, I decree and declare, I will sow and reap a harvest of blessing blessings. I decree and declare that I will sow and reap a harvest of blessings. I decree and declare, I will sow and reap a harvest of blessings. And I declare my harvest is coming. I declare, that's right, just keep swimming. And that's exactly what it feels like sometimes. You're just swimming along, and it's like, I'm tired. I don't think I can swim any further, and you just want to stop swimming. That's right, Tabitha said, keep swimming. I decree and declare I will sow and reap a harvest of blessings. And I declare I'm walking into my harvest season. 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 All right. I declare I'm walking into my harvest season. All right. So let's just take a few minutes to talk about the no complaining fast. How did you all do? And um, put a number two in the comments if you feel like you need to start over. I saw a few of you say that you needed to. Um, and for those of you that may be new, we did a 21 day um, no complaining fast. And for me, honestly, it started out really, really rocky. Um, and it was rough for me in the beginning, um, simply because um, it was, you know, I intentionally, because when we're fasting, was really mindful of how much I complained and I didn't realize just how much I complained. So I had to do a lot of resetting in the beginning. Um, but towards the middle, it got a little bit easier. Um, and then again, I always share whenever you're doing something, kids are great accountability. Um, so 
it was great letting the kids know um, what I was doing because they were the ones that reminded me, especially in the car when I'm driving. I found that that is where I complain the most because I feel like nobody in Georgia can drive. And so I'm constantly complaining um, in the car about other people, <laughs> other people's driving. And they're like, OK, mom, I thought you were on a no, no complaining fast. You're complaining about everybody around us. So anyway, all that to say, I felt like I did okay, but it was hard. Yes, Latanya, it was hard. It was hard. It was hard. So as a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna do it again as well. I think I'm going. I'm gonna do it again. I I, I need another round. I need another 21 day. No complain fast. All right, we need to start over. I think a lot of us do. You know, it really helped us to see just how much we complain. And, I, and you know, if the word tells us that all things work together for our good, you know, how can we complain? We shouldn't be complaining about anything, really. And I always say complaining is like a slap in the face to God. And I had to repent and reset so many times. And I was like, my God, forgive me. I didn't realize, you know, just how much I complain. And so, yeah, yeah. Um, Tamiko says I need to continue daily. I had to reset daily and that's okay. That's all right. That's all right. You was tested and you did have to rest a few times. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Yeah. It was an amazing fast. Caused me to be more sensitive to my heart condition. Amen, Tanika. Father used it to help me to pray more. Amen. That's right, Patricia. I declare my harvest is coming. So I pray that um, this word on today encouraged you. I don't know about me, but I was encouraged, you know, because there are times where I'm just like, ugh, you know, when God, when, you know, when we're praying some things for some things and we're getting up and we're doing the work, we're doing what it is that we should be doing. And, um, you know, we're all human, you know, we're all human. So we go through those seasons of feeling weary, but that's okay. But what it is we need to make sure that we don't do is give up. You know, we must persevere. We must persevere. We must persevere. So if that is you on today and you locked onto this broadcast feeling weary, it's okay. It's normal. But be encouraged because you are walking in. I declare today that you are walking into your harvest season. So um, for those of you that may be tuning in for the first time, we are also reading through the God Chasers together. I am almost done um, with the God Chasers. I am on um, chapter nine. So um, I'm almost done. All right. And so if you uh, if you have not even started the God Chasers, it's OK. If you don't even have the book yet, I encourage you to order it. Um, and then I posted, which this isn't just for waking early for his glory. Um, the March book, um, on rejection will be live on my page. I will be doing a book study, um, a live, uh, video every Friday at 1230. And I believe it's starting on whatever that Friday is March 3rd or March 6th or something like that. One of those Fridays. Um, so I'm excited about that. And many of us are also reading through the one year Bible together. Y'all go ahead and type in hashtag I will read my Bible. Hashtag I will read my Bible. So today is February 24th. And um, the readings, I believe I remember to put them in the caption of the video. If I did not, I will. And last but not least, please make sure that you have printed off your Bible promises um, from 365promises.com. Today is February 24th. So if you are doing like me, you read from February 1 through the current date, which is the 24th. If not, you just read the 24th. And so our promise for today, <laughs> which was one of the scripture references I gave you all, I will reward those who diligently seek me with the heart of faith. I will reward those who diligently seek me with the heart of faith. So that is our promise for today. I will reward those who diligently seek me with the heart of faith. And that comes from Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 6. All right. And remember, diligently means persistent effort. Diligently means persistent effort. So I will reward those who seek me with persistent effort. All right. He's saying he will reward those who seek him with persistent effort persistent effort all right so father we honor you father we bless you father we thank you father we thank you for your word your holy word we thank you for this word that leads us we thank you for this word that guides us and father we thank you for this word that protects us and father we thank you that according to job 22 and 28 you said that we shall decree a thing we shall declare a thing and it shall be established so father we thank you that as we have made the declaration that we decree and declare that we will sow and reap a harvest and that we declare that we are walking into our into our 
harvest. We declare that we are walking into our harvest. We thank you that it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So that's it. All right. That's it. So uh, we'll just take this time to share um, your takeaway. What is it that stood out to you today? Or um, what is it that you will do differently because of what you heard today? All right. So let's talk about that for a moment. All right. Your take. Uh, Trisha said all of it. Right. Amen. Amen. Having to highlight some stuff so I don't forget. Oh, my highlighter is drying out. I need a new one. Um, Dina says we must stay encouraged and not give up. Amen. I don't know about you all, but I was definitely encouraged today. Definitely encouraged. Um, Tanuke says my my takeaway today is to remember that reaping takes time. Yes. Amen. It does. It takes time. Just because we don't see it right away doesn't mean it's not going to happen right um bonnie says do not grow weary and well doing amen i always have to i'm always referring back to that verse to encourage my own self you know amen peggy says i will not give up yeah i know i'm encouraged too natasha yes your harvest is coming uh audrey says i need a do-over that's all right i'm, I'm gonna do a do-over too we can kind of just do that on our own but i'm definitely gonna do a do-over and keep doing it <laughs> um tamiko says hold on i need something on my lips and all i have is lip gloss this early in the morning oh actually hold on i have my emu oil i need something on my lips Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Excuse me. Hold the line. <laughs> All right. I needed some help <laughs> with them lips this morning. I will persevere. Um, Wendy says, I'll have to replay. Okay. Yes, your harvest is coming. That's right. Your harvest is coming. I don't know why I'm always spilling this every morning I'm spilling this got to do better I don't know why I'm spilling it every morning hello Harlem good to see you this morning we are just wrapping it up but I see your name Harlem hello Evangelist Rosa says my harvest is coming. Y'all, I just made a big old mess over here. I did. I just made a mess. Just made a big old mess. Yolanda says we reap in kind what we sow. Amen. So we need to be mindful. What kind of seeds are we sowing? What kind of seeds are we sowing? What are we planting? All right. Looks like y'all are done sharing your takeaways. All right, so remember today, drink your water, go for a walk. Listen, y'all, your challenge this week, I wanna challenge you all to take at least 30 minutes for yourself this week, all right? 30 minutes for yourself this week. Go for a 30 minute walk every day this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Some of you are already walking in place right now, which is good. Um, you all messaged me. I was walking in place while we were sharing our takeaways and that's amazing, so continue to do that. All right, so take 30 minutes for yourself today and the rest of this week, all right? You deserve it. You are worth it, 30 minutes. All right, so it's 5.13, I have to go. Did I share, is that it? Yeah, I think that's it, that's everything. Yes, do the 30, 30, 30, yes. All right, y'all, so that's it, we're done. Y'all shared your takeaways. Um, 30 minutes, 30 minutes every day. Take 30 minutes for yourself. Yes, self-care is important. Self-care is necessary. You are worth it. 
there are 24 hours in a day. You can certainly make the time. You won't find the time. You just won't find the time. You have to make the time. So make the time to take 30 minutes for you. All right, 30 minutes out of 24 hours, 30 minutes. All right, so I love y'all. Have an awesome day. I'm about to take my 30 minutes for myself. All right, bye y'all and get my workout done for 30 minutes. Bye y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs>